Thank you very much to members of the Minister. We're going to move on now to the next item of business, which is a statement by Fergus Ewing on the Scottish Government response to a future strategy for Scottish agriculture. And the Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement. Uh, could I encourage all members who wish to ask a question to press their request to speak buttons as soon as possible? And I call on Fergus Ewing. Presiding officer, my first Royal Highland show as Rural Economic Secretary was in June 2016 was somewhat surreal. On the Thursday, I presented key themes emerging to develop a new strategy for Scottish agriculture, themes which were upbeat, positive, and I hope visionary. Uh, and I believe people left the session generally with a spring in their step. However, the following day on Friday, we were all reeling from the outcome of the EU referendum and few felt like springing anywhere. When it became obvious that Brexit was more a slogan than a plan, it was clear that this outlook and work would be needed more than ever. So in June last year, I appointed four champions to build on these themes to make recommendations for a future strategy for Scottish agriculture. Archie Gibson on food and drink, Henry Graham on education and skills, John Kinnaird on sustainability, and Marion McCormick on public value. The champions established working groups with a broad range of contributors from across Scotland. 55 individuals took part in those groups, and I would express my gratitude to them all for generously giving of their time, their knowledge, and expertise. In November last year, the champions published an interim discussion document to which 25 organizations responded. Using all the information, views, and ideas received, they then developed their final report, which was published last Thursday, with a full set of recommendations on each area. Uh, Presiding officer, I want to record my sincere thanks to all four champions who have invested so much energy, personal time, and resource in the task that I set them. Between them, they have lifetimes of experience and expertise, which they applied to their remits. But they also listened and took on board wider views from right across the farming and food and drink sectors, and I welcome their report. In particular, I welcome the three statements of ambition for Scottish farming. Scotland's form of agriculture will be enviable for its alignment with our land and other assets in all their biophysical diversity, supported by tailored policies that lead to real commercial results. Scottish farming will take the actions that forearm it for difficult times and justify its support from the public purse. And Scottish farming stewardship of the countryside will protect and enhance our natural assets and will be valued and supported by society. I also uh, welcome the report's 18 headline recommendations. Uh, I don't have time to go over them all, presiding officer, but key ones include that the public must be better informed about Scottish farming and what it delivers, and policies must be guided by real evidence about what the public values. Uh, and I agree. A top priority starting immediately is a change of mindset to help farmers and crofters become more progressive, entrepreneurial, and resilient. Uh, this is a proposition, one which we must address, and I'm conscious that change is also at the heart of NFU Scotland's recommendations for the future. There is no doubt achieving this, while also taking people with us, will be difficult, but I commit today to seeking to achieve that. Stewardship of the countryside should be a key part of future policy. I've always maintained that farming has twin roles. Farmers are producers of food and also custodians of the countryside, and these roles are complementary. In the future, we must maintain those two roles and ensure that farmers and crofters not only play their part in that stewardship and in contributing to our climate change ambitions, but as the champions also recommend that they're recognized for their positive actions. Farming must be more visible as a career option and must attract more young people. This recommendation is key. We must ensure that our young people see and grasp the opportunity of working on the land and in related industries as both a positive and a rewarding one. Government, parliament, industry and others must cooperate on a 10 to 15 year strategy for Scottish farming all must work together to get the best outcomes and facing up to harsh realities. 
I, I welcome the realism here in this report. The champions and others are acutely aware that farming needs this strategy with a timescale longer than one parliamentary term. And I hope we must all agree with that and work together to the benefit of Scottish farming in the future. And they also recognise that we potentially face the most challenging of times. And that leads me to Brexit. If we leave the EU and CAP because of Brexit, it will take time to create a future policy framework for Scottish farming. So, I also welcome the champion's recommendation for a transition period. I have previously signalled my preference for such a phase. The champions set out related proposals and measures, and again, I will consider them carefully. Of course, the lack of certainty and clarity from the UK government on what Scotland might expect, should we have to Brexit, does make all this rather difficult. We were promised that all lost EU funding would be replaced. Despite con uh, continued pressure from myself, my cabinet colleagues in Scotland, and indeed ministers in the other devolved administrations, current guarantees and commitments fall short of honouring that promise. Despite my best efforts, we cannot even make progress on the convergence review, despite uh, Mr. Gove promising last year to set that up. And without such a review and getting a better payment rate agreed, we have very little chance of getting a fair funding settlement that acknowledges and provides for Scotland's needs and interests. This lack of information over funding matters. Setting off to any business plan with no numbers in it is simply not worth the paper it's written on. Nor is there any clarity on future trade arrangements uh, that are so important, not just for beef and lamb, but also for dairy produce and for our burgeoning fruit and vegetable sectors. There is still a lack of detail about the position of EU nationals who contribute so much to our farming and food businesses and generally to rural life in Scotland. We don't uh, even yet know if we will be able to exercise devolved powers over farming and food production, powers that were devolved to Scotland in 1998 and which the UK government is determined to grab for itself on spurious grounds. There might well be a need for frameworks in some areas where powers are pooled for everyone's benefit on these islands. But the Conservative ar arguments come unstuck when you realise that there are currently no barriers to trading in the UK from within a CAP, which allows each of the four nations to operate different support schemes, and that there is collaboration on animal health and welfare conducted through relationships of mutual trust and understanding among officials, particularly the chief veterinary officers, without resort to legislation or single systems. Signing officer, people, including members of this parliament, want to know what the future for farming and food production in Scotland will look like. <clears throat> However, agriculture is part of the much wider rural economy and future farm policy should reflect that reality. This parliament asked me to establish an independent group involving rel relevant stakeholders to provide advice as to the principles and policies that should underpin options for appropriate rural support beyond 2020. I duly did so and the National Council of Rural Advisors has been working to deliver this. I expect to I, I expect to receive a further report from the Council shortly and want to consider its recommendations and proposals alongside those of the agriculture champions. Any change we take forward must also, as the champions point out, be guided by real evidence about what the public values. We should therefore involve the wider public in determining future policy and seek their views and opinions too. In conclusion, Presiding Officer, I will consider the Champion's report fully and carefully as I explore and plan for all eventualities in our future. And while the Champions themselves make clear that no change is not an option, I want to offer this reassurance. Wherever Scotland's future lies and whatever our future holds, in the absence of stability and security from elsewhere, this government is determined to provide as much certainty and clarity for rural Scotland as we can. Thank you very much. We'll try and allow up to 20 minutes for questions, starting with Donald Cameron. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'd like to thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of his statement, and I also refer to farming and crofting in my register of interest. It is absolutely clear to these benches that the Cabinet Secretary's words today 
and a report published last week do little to alleviate the concerns held by the agricultural sector across Scotland, which is becoming increasingly distressed at the lack of any concrete proposals for funding arrangements post-Brexit, not least when the Scottish Government know the amount of cap funding that Scotland is guaranteed to receive until 2022. Yeah. The SNP Government's approach is weak and lightweight and sits in stark contrast to the comprehensive approach of both DEFRA and the Welsh Government, who have both published detailed proposals with various options for post-Brexit support in England and Wales, respectively. The, the Cabinet Secretary's statement ends with a wish to provide certainty and clarity, while with respect, Scotland's farming sector remains in complete limbo because of the dereliction of duty from this Government when it comes to laying out the substance of future support. Almost two years after the Brexit vote, Scotland's farmers and crofters don't want talk about power grabs, they want detail. So my question is a simple one to ask and a simple one to answer. When will detailed proposals for Scotland's agricultural support system be produced? Cabinet Secretary. I think it would have behoved any member of this parliament to address the content of the statement in the Agricultural Champions Report. I think it would have displayed a bit of respect to four individuals, four experienced individuals uh, who are regarded as impartial, who have expertise in their fields, to pay some regard to the content of the report, which is the content of this statement. Uh, and I would uh, suggest that uh, if Mr Cameron has not implied in, applied himself to uh, read the report, he should do so. Because unlike him, I want to listen to what people have to say in Scotland uh, about the future of our policy. Uh, it is not my desire to dictate policy from top to bottom, but to listen to experts and others. And that's why I appointed the agricultural champions. And it's also why, uh, following a resolution, uh, following a motion of this parliament that uh, I appointed the National Council of Rural Advisors. And I can confirm to the member in uh, providing a response to his, uh, his uh, question uh, that following a full and careful study of the report that uh, has been published last week from the Agricultural Champions and following the publication in the coming months of the final report of the National Council of Rural Advisors, then of course, we shall respond to those recommendations uh, and put forward our views as to the future. But I would point out that the document they referred to from the UK contains no figures at all, no figures as to the future post-Brexit. Uh, and it was his party, uh, his party that promised post-Brexit that the totality of the funding for rural Scotland would be at least matched. On that key issue, on that key pledge, made by Mr Gove, Mr Eustace and many other Brexiteers. There has been total silence. Once and only once we receive confirmation about that information, uh, is, will it be possible to put forward any detailed proposal? Uh, uh, but we are, of course, working hard uh, in order to look at the best options uh, for the future for Scottish agriculture, despite the enormous uncertainties that are thrown up by the Brexit bungle that has been pursued by the UK government. Colin Smith. Thank you, President Officer, and thank you to the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of his statement. Can I also place on record my appreciation to the four agricultural champions for their work and report, much of which Labour can support. I also share the Scottish Government's concern at the lack of certainty, not only on what the final negotiated Brexit settlement between the UK and the rest of the EU will be, but frankly the lack of certainty on what the final negotiated settlement will be within the Conservative Party on the UK Government's position in those negotiations. But, President Officer, that can't be used as a shield by the Scottish Government not to set out clearly what its vision is for post-Brexit support for agriculture and rural Scotland. I said in the Chamber last week that there is frustration among Scotland's farmers in the lack of detail from the Scottish Government on this issue. Organisations such as the NFU Scotland and Scottish Environmental Link are leading the way, exploring alternatives to the common agricultural policy and setting out clear principles behind what that support should look like. So does the Cabinet Secretary agree that it's time for the Scottish Government to do the same, to bring all key stakeholders together to agree a shared vision of what Scotland wants to see that support look like and then take that case to the UK Government instead of waiting for the UK Government to tell 
us what to think. In other words, isn't it time for the Scottish Government to stop waiting and start leading on this issue? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I, I appreciate Mr Smith's acknowledgement of the good work that the champions have done. I think that's quite respectful uh, and in contrast to uh, the approach of the Conservatives, sadly. Uh, we have, of course, and we constantly bring stakeholders together, and both myself and Rosanna Cunningham uh, have done so on numerous occasions in order to discuss the best way ahead. Uh, and that uh, led to the appointment of the agricultural champions, whose recommendations in chapter three, I would have thought merit, a cons merit considerable um, uh, careful consideration rather than the political approach that the Conservatives have adopted. To take Mr. Smith's uh, question, there are really three elements for any business that are fundamental. There are costs, revenue, and workforce. Now, in relation to Brexit, uh, it appears almost certain that if we are dragged out of the single market, there will be tariffs. Costs will go up. This was commented on by numerous spokespeople at the NSA event recently at Ballantrae, not least by Jim McLaren of QMS. So costs are likely to go up. Secondly, revenue is likely to go down. And thirdly, with regard to the workforce, the continuing availability of those people who give of, give of their lives, their effort, uh, their family life to work here in Scotland, as they are welcome, that future has been uh, uh, under a cloud of uncertainty since the Brexit referendum. So the three fundamentals for every single business are shrouded in uncertainty. Uh, and as soon as the UK government can get round to deciding something on Brexit and putting forward some sort of plan, perhaps it may be possible to uh, address the realities in response to that. But until that, there are no figures, there is no clarity, and there is no capacity, therefore, to deliver any clear plan at all. Uh, and that must be a statement of the blindingly obvious. Call on Stuart Stevenson to be followed by Edward Mountain. Um, Presiding officer, I draw your attention to my uh, ownership of a very small registered agricultural holding. Can the Cabinet Secretary clarify if the champion's vision and recommendations apply only after we've left the EU or whether there are some that we can start work on before then? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, yes, I can confirm that the champion's uh, recommendations apply to the future, whatever it may hold. Uh, and that is, I think, why I'm surprised that the Conservatives don't appear the slightest bit interested in the work that's done by these leading figures in Scottish rural life. It's, it's very sad, really. Uh, but the champions have a great deal to say about the future's future on sustainability, on productivity, on skills. They have a lot to say about, about uh, the need for new entrants, about the need for increased productivity. They have a lot to say uh, about the contribution that farmers already make to the stewardship of the environment. Uh, uh, of course, one of their uh, main twin purposes. And I would commend, as Mr. Stevenson obviously agrees, to every member that they read carefully the contents and recommendations of this report, as I think they're extremely valuable in informing a pathway ahead for Scotland, whatever happens in relation to Brexit. Edward Mountain to be followed by Claudia Bewish. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer, and I'd like to thank the Cabinet Secretary for sight of his speech. I'd also like to declare members to my register of interest. This afternoon, Presiding Officer, we've had a statement from the Cabinet Secretary that says nothing about a plan or a policy. And I do want to quote the agricultural champions. Let me quote it specifically. Brexit amplifies and makes more urgent some fundamental challenges that farming was already facing. They have also accepted the EU will reduce cap funding over future years, and we know that the UK government have protected subsidies until 22, 2022. Farmers need a plan for the next five years. That means, Cabinet Secretary, you're going to have to stop dithering and start delivering. So where is the policy? Will you be consulting with farmers before next year's crops are planned and planted? And when will we see it? I encourage members to speak through the chair, but Cabinet Secretary. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, Mr Mountain says that the UK government has protected subsidies until 2022. That's simply not accurate. Um, the facts are that the assurances provided do not relate to the totality of rural funding. They relate primarily to, to the 
pillar one, and they relate to the phrase farm support. Uh, all of the elements of support, I wouldn't use the word subsidy because I think what they do is valuable, and subsidy implies that uh, Mr. Mountain disagrees, but the assurances simply do not apply to the totality of pillar two payments. So to say that all subsidies, as he puts it, is protected to 2022 is simply yet another false premise from the Conservatives. And I say again that uh, I think it really would be more respectful uh, if some attention were played to the substance of the reports that we've had uh, rather than nitpick and make party political partisan points, which seems to be the Scottish Conservatives' only contribution to this debate. Just encourage shorter questions, shorter answers. We've just got until 10-2 for this session. Claudia Beamish to be followed by Kate Forbes. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. While I welcome the Champion's report, food banks are Scotland's shame. Can the Cabinet Secretary reassure the Chamber and this country that ending food poverty through the principles and structures of the support and development of local affordable fresh food for our communities in a way that fuses the twin roles of food production and stewardship of the countryside will be at the heart of the Scottish Government's future policy, whatever happens with Brexit. Cabinet Secretary. Yes, I, I think Claudia Beamish raises a, a, a more sensible point than we've had from the Conservatives today, sadly. Uh, and of course, food poverty is a, a blight in our country and tackling it is a priority for us all. And farmers, of course, play a direct part in addressing that by contributing food uh, for the nation. Uh, and I'm also engaged, of course, in encouraging and working with public bodies, including schools, to ensure so far as possible that uh, food is procured locally for school meals, for example. Uh, and some local authorities have had enormous success in that, and we've seen the proportion of food procured locally increase. And that, I think, does contribute to um, a sufficient, healthy, nutritious diet uh, for our children in particular, and address across the board of the Scottish Government with my colleagues the topic that Claudia Beamish has raised today. Kate Forbes, to be followed by Mark Ruskell. Uh, thank you. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware of the UK Government's white paper on the future of farm support. Are there areas in that report which the Scottish Government is likely to support or adopt? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I want to study the report uh, carefully, as I said, and I wish also to do so in conjunction with study of the second report from the National Council of Rural Advisors. And here, of course, presiding officer, the NCRA report, well, the NCRA was set up at the behest of this parliament following an amendment accepted from Mr. Rumbles to a motion. And therefore, that is something I think it's correct that I should do in order to implement the will of parliament. And it's therefore correct, I think logically, that since parliament has asked me to do this, that we allow time A for the NCRA to deliver its final report and B, uh, pay them the respect that they deserve and that Parliament deserves by studying it carefully before announcing conclusions. So we will do precisely that. Mark Roskill to be followed by John Mason. The presiding officer, if I heard the Cabinet Secretary correctly, just 55 people have been feeding in to this critical work on the future vision of Scotland's food and farming. Disappointing given that over 800 people, farmers and growers, food businesses and communities have been meeting from the Scottish borders to Shetland in kitchen table talks to talk about their vision of food and farming, now pulled together and published in a critical report. There seems to be something missing here, presiding officer. So can I ask the cabinet secretary, why has the Scottish government failed to meet its promise to consult on a good food nation bill in 2017. When is this now going to happen? Cabinet Secretary. Well, uh, if I may just correct the, the member of signing officer, um, the first uh, phase of, of consultation by the champions involved um, early work with a number of individuals, and I referred to uh, the fact that there were 55 individuals who made specific contributions. Um, secondly, and I don't think Mr. Russell picked this up, but uh, I did say in my statement that uh, after they published their uh, initial work uh, last year, uh, they then consulted on that with a number of organizations, I think around 25, that uh, included Ringlink, the RSPB Scotland, the Scofti Scottish Crofting Federation, as well as statutory bodies, the Scottish Wildlife Trust, and, 
Uh, and therefore, these are bodies, some of them membership bodies, some of them not, some of them statutory bodies that I, I think reach out to a large number of people. So, you know, I, I think it's maybe slightly unfair to chide them for a lack of consultation. They were very open in their work, uh, and they remain so. Uh, so I think that's a little bit unfair. So far as the, the second part of the statement concerned, it's not really the topic of, of today, but obviously we wish to progress all of the, uh, the uh, matters that uh, we have undertaken in due course, and I'm sure we will come back to the specific topic uh, uh, in, in due course. John Mason to be followed by Mike Rumbles. Uh, thanks very much. I wonder if the Cabinet Secretary feels that the Champions put enough emphasis on climate change in their recommendations. Cabinet Secretary. Well, I, I think uh, they, they have taken that vital matter uh, into full account. Uh, many of the recommendations can indeed help reduce greenhouse emissions. Uh, and I commend a, a careful reading of, of uh, the report. Um, their approach is strongly consistent with that set out in the agriculture chapter of the climate change plan earlier this year. For example, improvements in efficiency, benchmarking and more integrated land use can each help to lower the emissions intensity of Scottish produce. Uh, and as the champions have said in the report, and I quote, reducing waste will lead to lower greenhouse gas emissions per unit of output. And I would also add that it can help to improve farm profitability as well. And that's why I think that these two documents complement each other in the future. Mike Rumbles to be followed by Emma Harper. Presiding officer, the cabinet secretary just said in his statement, people, including MSPs, want to know what the future of farming and food production in Scotland will look like. Too true, but it's his job to tell us, not anyone else's. Why hasn't he involved relevant stakeholders for his advisers, as Parliament told him to do in January of last year? He has the producers, but where are the consumers and where are the environmentalists? He's wasted nearly two years. When will he stop making excuses about not knowing the figures and start making the actual decisions he is being paid to make on our behalf? Cabinet Secretary. Well, the motion to, to which Mr Rumbles refers is a motion passed by Parliament. And uh, my belief and understanding is that uh, I have uh, obtempered the obligations incumbent upon us in that amendment to the letter. Uh, I, and I've said so before, and I, I say it here again. Um, so far as the, the primary question is concerned, at the moment, presiding officer, we don't actually know whether there will be a Brexit. We don't know if there will be a Brexit deal. We don't know if there will be no deal. Well, well the, the UK took us on this course. Scotland voted against this, right? Okay. We don't know whether there will be tariffs. We don't know uh, whether there will be uh, regulatory barriers to perishable goods. We don't know if our Scotch lambs, which, uh, for which Euro European markets are so essential, will be able to access those markets, as Jim McLaren and many others said, in much more trenchant terms than I'm using today, quite frankly, at Ballantrae, at least according to the SF reporting of them. And we don't know if the workforce who we value in Scotland from countries throughout Europe will continue to be welcome here. So in the light of the fact that we have a complete, complete lack of clarity about Brexit because of the way that the UK uh, cabinet and prime minister have completely failed to indicate any clarity at all, it is somewhat premature to expect me to have a clear plan in the outcome of all of that. Emma Harper. Thank you, President Officer. I remind Chamber I am the PLO to the Cabinet Secretary. The Cabinet Secretary has just spoke about tariffs and increased costs and decreased revenue and the uncertainty of Brexit for farmers. What steps is the Scottish Government taking to prepare for the Tories' Armageddon Brexit, which newspaper reports even suggested would result in Scotland running out of food on the second day after Brexit exit day? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I mean, the, that, uh, that reference to um, the Armageddon option is, is actually not uh, a product of the Scottish Government uh, spin doctors or officials. It's actually an option set out by advisors to the UK Government. It's advisors to the UK Government that actually said that Scotland, and I think parts of England, may run out of food within just a couple of days. A Brexit. I mean, this shows how serious it is. And all we get from the lot over there 
Not one of them, incidentally, will say a word against the way that UK is handling or mishandling this. All we get is a political rant that we've got to produce a plan when we've got no idea whatsoever, and no one else does in Scotland, Scotland who voted against Brexit anyway, about what exactly is happening down south. It is a complete and utter shambles. Thank you. And that concludes our statement this afternoon. Apologies to Mr Scott and Ms Martin. There's no time left. In fact, we've used up all the time available for flexibility in this afternoon's debate. Our next debate will be a debate on motion 12561 in the name of Angela Constance on celebrating Scotland's volunteers. We'll just take a few seconds for members to change seats.